All right, here we go. We should be live. Fingers crossed it's all working this time. I'm trying something different again. This is like my experimental phase of live streaming. Let us know if the audio and video is okay. We're going to take some questions. I'm also going to give you a few updates on what's coming up, what I'm working on, and what you'll see coming up very, very soon. So welcome, everybody. We've got Steve from... Uh, is a Bushkill, Pennsylvania, USA. Is that Pennsylvania? Is that how you say that? Or is that near somewhere else? <laughs> All right, we've got Omen. Welcome, mate. Back in the lair. I am. This is good Good room. Actually, I can keep it a lot warmer than my In The Blue studio. So, little heater on the floor. Good to go. It's quite cold here today. It snowed not far from here just the other day. So, uh, it's, it's still kind of cold. We're coming out of winter, though, soon. <laughs> all right, we're going to take some questions. I've got subscriber mode on as well. So, uh, all you have to do is sub. You can ask questions, chat in the chat box on the right, all that kind of stuff. So we're all good to go. That's his take on it. Very cool. All right. So if anyone has any questions, please let us know. The stream should be in theory, better, slightly better quality than last time. I've done some tweaking. So hopefully we are good to go. This Saturday, Guitar Search Saturday live premiere. We've got another one from Florida as well. This shop is a whole lot of fun. So join us. It'll be 10.30 p.m. Melbourne, Sydney time. It's about an hour earlier or so than my usual upload time. So if you're awake when you see my videos go live or you know if you're not working or whatever the case may be, that's when that will go up live. I've already uploaded the video. Uh, I'll do the thumbnail and I'll schedule it sometime today. So you'll see it uh, pop up for the weekend, but it's uh, gonna be good. We're also gonna be doing some live jamming again, which will be fun. So I've got a few guys coming over to the house. We're gonna do some recording, do some playing, and if anything good comes up, I'll post it. That's part of the fun. Playing with other people. <laughs> and Dr. Rick will be part of that as well. So it should be a lot of fun. All right, we've got Lawrence. Welcome, mate. He's from Alaska. You know, that's one place I've always wanted to go, mate. Maybe not so much in the wintertime. But it's definitely a place that has been high on my list for years. And I've never done it. It's sort of like, I probably should have gone the year I went to Vancouver. It would have made way more sense. But that was a long time ago. It was 1999. Thrash Metal Studio, welcome mate. Hey, I saw your uh, Marshall DSL video, by the way, very cool. I didn't comment on it, I think I got a call or something. So I'll go back and uh, leave a comment on that video. But um, great, great amplifier. I'm glad you're digging it and I hope the uh, speaker change goes well for it. Uh, looks and sounds great, thanks man, awesome, cool. So I'm using this little encoder I've had for probably two years. It's this little dedicated live streaming box. Rather than the whole switcher thing, it's just easier. I can hit a button and it goes live. So that that's what we're using today. All right. Have I ever seen the 80s movie Prowler? Now I'm a big fan of... Uh, a big fan of 80s stuff. Let me have a look. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't look familiar by the... by the video cover. <laughs> I've got a lot of crappy horror movies in my collection. Not that I've actually got that as many DVDs anymore as I used to. I, I got rid of like three quarters of my collection, but most of what I kept are the weird ones. I'll have to check it out. All right. Let me just, I'm going to move this over just a little bit here. I'm going to pop the chat out. So oh, I know what I did differently today. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. I had the, the, uh, the comments on the screen and I don't have that today. So I'm going to just be looking down here today. I'll just make this a little bit larger so I can actually see what I'm reading. All right, uh, Michael M, welcome. He says, I have a Blues Junior 4 and I've been wondering how to get more sustain and punch out of it with my Strat. Any suggestion? Look, you can always boost it with a pedal. That'll definitely help. Some people like using compressor pedals, but with the Strat, it tends to also bring the noise floor of the amp up. So if you're already suffering from a lot of buzz, it's probably not the best option. Um, I would say use... Uh, like it does have that fat boost button, give that a go. But any good overdrive with a mid hump frequency will definitely give it way more kick. So, so even something as bog standard as a tube screamer, you know, as boring as that may sound advice wise, it will definitely work with that amp. I've owned Blues Juniors before and they're a big fan of those mid hump pedals. So you can give that a shot. Um, also a big part of what makes Blues Juniors or any tube or valve amplifier sound good, turn it up. That's what a lot of people overlook they use the gain control too much and not the volume control so crank the volume 
and volume will give you m way more sustain. Even if you're playing loud and clean, you'll get more sustain than you would if you were using like the volume down and the gain up. It just sounds kind of fizzy like that. So try experimenting around like that and play with the EQ a little bit as well. Don't be scared to just sort of like crank up the mid frequency control. Change Strangers, welcome. He says, uh, Joyo King of Tone versus Batson in terms of quality versatility. Uh, let me ask you this. Did I review the King of Tone? Joyo King of Tone. I can't remember if I did. What's it look like? I forget. <laughs> oh, okay, so I haven't reviewed that one. Look, I'm not too sure. The, um, the Batson one was pretty cool, actually. I, I didn't mind that at all. Um, the King of Tone, I'm not too sure, mate. You just check out whatever videos you can find and see whether or not it's going to work for your style of playing. It looks like it's got quite a lot of controls and toggle switches on there. Oh, not that many, actually, for a two-channel pedal, but it's a good deal. So 100 Australian dollars looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, just do some research. What I normally do anytime I'm buying something, I'll try and find as many videos on one particular thing as I can and then sort of assess, assess whether or not that's going to work for what it is I do. Uh, but yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've tried that one. Sorry. Uh, the chat has moved. Let me just. Ah, oh, here we go. Cool. Ian's guitar shack. Welcome. Did I say shack? I hope I said that right. <laughs> welcome, mate. Doug. Uh, he says, "Have you? Uh, I guess that's supposed to be new used. Have you used any of those new PS vein tubes? No." Uh, I haven't, and you say the 12x7's uh, amazing and cheap. Cool, so that's good. Any Anytime you can get valves for a good price, it's always good old tubes. You can, yeah, say it either way. That's cool. I, I haven't actually heard of them. I, I don't often really need to buy valves. Anytime I do, I usually buy JJ's. That were, those were kind of like readily available. At least they were, you know, prior to um, when I last needed them anyway. So yeah, I, I'll look into them. I don't know those ones. Uh, Fritz says, I took your advice and bought an American Pro 2 Tally in Miami Blue. Wow, what a player. Love your content. Hey, thanks, Fritz. Well done, mate. Congrats. Miami Blue has got to be probably the coolest color out of that range. There, there's plenty of good ones, actually, but the Miami Blue really does look good. So, yeah, there's a Strat I really love as a lefty in that Miami Blue from that series, and it's it's great. But the Tallys are fantastic instruments as well, so congrats. That's a long-term guitar. Whatever that gets released at NAMM and all that next season thing and the one after, forget about it. <laughs> Keep that guitar, it's good. You know, these um, every year, that's the problem I always say with NAMM. It makes everything you own feel like junk, even though things just change incrementally or not for the better. It's like, hey, we've got a whole new series of strats and they've we've changed the color. <laughs> yeah, great. But that guitar, man, it's got the best of a lot of things for me. Great pickups. It's got uh, just a... Um, it's got that push-pull thing. I don't know if I really love that too much or use it from memory, but the neck shape and profile is good and the finish on there is great as well. Uh, oh, chat just moved. Going back up. Uh, I would love to know how you use the Joyo amp in a box while recording with other pedals. Uh, so that little... Are you talking... I need more information, Tim. Sorry, man. I'm not exactly sure which product you're using. You're talking about that speaker cab thing? Because you can just run your pedals into that and then out into your digital audio interface or sound card or whatever the case may be. Steve says, hello, what's a good Telecaster neck pickup for Chime uh, for Praise Team Church Work? Uh, so, well, Tele neck pickups are pro probably like one of the hardest things to get right. A lot of them are too rolled out in the high end. A lot of it is a bit of hit and miss. There's no like, oh, just buy this one and you'll be sorted. A lot of people love the Twisted Tally neck pickups because they give them give you that sort of like extra snap on the top end. So you can try those. Uh, Lola also make a really good range of pickups for Telecasters that have a lot of neck snap. A couple of my friends use those as well. You've kind of got to try them and, and just... Do your research to see what you're really looking for. I always find like the Fender Custom Shop pickups are in a league of their own when it comes to neck Telecaster pickups. They're wired in a way where 
you get that top end that you don't get on a lot of sort of like the entry level um, guitars. They incrementally get better. Like the American Pro stuff sounds great as well. But then you've got the custom shop ones. And they generally have a little bit of a thinner sound, but more snap. You can also try going for something sort of a little bit less hot, like a like a traditional 50 style vintage pickup. Sometimes that can also have too much rolled out high. So you've, you've really got to do your research with that. It's, it's not uh, like a, you know, like a black and white decision. But yeah, twisted tally, neck pickups, usually the way to go. A lot of people like those. Uh, Alex says, not quite a question, but fan of the channel. Didn't realize I wasn't subscribed until now. Love your review of the Fender Amps. Hey, thanks, Alex. I appreciate that, mate. <laughs> yeah, I think putting the subscriber mode on is a bit of an eye-opener for folks. They're like, oh. Because I, I, I know what I'm like, too. I see a lot of stuff come up in my feed. I'm like, how am I not subscribed to these channels? I've been watching them for ages. So I'm like, all right, done. So thank you. Fritz says, come to uh, Pennsylvania. That would be cool. Um, I went to the I went to one airport there once. I think that was it. Um, Porkchop says, hey, Shane, sending my best to you and the missus. Thanks, mate. I hope you're doing well. 80s horror is the best. <laughs> Coming from a, a guy with the name Omen. Yeah, that's always good. Another another classic. I I love the old eighties movies. I'm a, I'm a big junkie for them. It's funny. I think because when I was a kid, I wasn't really supposed to be watching horror movies, and they ended up just becoming like this this thing I did. Watched them with friends and you know late night TV or whatever, and I was like, yeah, I just got into them. And then I went back even further and started enjoying some of the seventies stuff. There's a lot of obviously trash in the seventies and eighties as well, but the eighties was a good mix of like. All the good stuff, you know, the, the I guess, gore and, and humor. That was the start of that whole craze. I, I really like that. Um, Ian's Guitar Sh Shack says uh, same thing. He loves the B movies. Uh, bought a 59 Jazzmaster in a pawn shop, 1966 for $175. Wow, kept it 52 years. Uh, sold it. Seller's remorse. Oh no! Bought a Squire Jazzmaster. It's better in every way. You know what? I'd love to find out. I mean, you don't have to obviously put this publicly, but let us know what the selling price roughly was compared to the price that you got it back in the day. Because um, I'm tipping that would be you probably were, it probably worked out okay for you, right? Yeah, the um, Squire stuff these days is, you know, it's very playable, very usable. Like most guitars now, there's not a lot of junk on the market, which is great. Uh, sure, you can find them and, and get them on eBay for 80 bucks, and you're going to probably buy a piece of junk. But, you know, any of the brands that you see now, a lot online, they're generally doing well because they're, they're making good stuff. Hey, uh, Lawrence says, I like the f filmography. Hey, Halloween upcoming. Yeah, last year I did this thing called... Um, this will wake the dead. A little pedal, haunted pedal video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's on my. Um, if you just go to In the Blues on the YouTube, you'll see it on my new here feed. I'm pretty sure I put it in there. But uh, yeah, it was uh, coming up with some ideas slowly. I've got a few ideas, but no real proper idea like I had last year. <laughs> I need to kind of work something out because I, I really enjoyed making that little video. It was good fun. Uh, and it was fun to shoot something different as well, rather than just be doing like guitar videos all the time. Like something a little bit more creative from the behind the camera side was great. All right. I'm just going to have a quick sip of some caffeine. I got a different one today. Everyone can ridicule me in the comments. <laughs> it's out of shot. Just I'm going to move some stuff. All uh, right, we have um, great sh shops in the uh, po Poconos. Is that how you say that? Cool. What are the best capacitors for a Strat? That's a good question. I don't really do a whole lot of like modding on stuff. But anytime I would need to do anything, it's usually as simple as putting like a high pass filter in, which means you can turn the volume control down and it still keeps all of the top end. A lot of the time with a Strat though, you won't need it because they stay pretty glassy even with the volume control down but if you find like you're rolling it out you don't really need to mod everything that can also help pickups that sound a little muddy you can add a, a high pass filter or a treble bleed into it i did a video on that too it should be on the youtube channel somewhere 
and that will just give you way more top end. But in terms of like what small parts you would need for certain things, th there'll be plenty of resources online. I'm I'm not really like I'm not, I'm not a high level tech guy when it comes to that kind of stuff. I try not to mod anything unless it really has a problem. And then it's so few and far between that I, I don't do it as as much as a lot of guys do. A lot of guys will just buy a guitar, pull the pickups out, and they'll start butchering it. But I'm like, man, I want it to sound good before I do any of that stuff. So that's that's at least the way I look at it. Hey, we've got uh, Dr. Jekyll. Welcome. One of the most infamous games of all time. <laughs> haven't, he says, I haven't caught your live stream in a while. Yeah, I haven't really been doing too many. I did one last week. I think this day last week. Before that, it was a basically two months <laughs> beforehand. So I thought we'll get back into it, start doing some more and um, yeah, just sort of like take more questions and answers, uh, take more questions so I can give people answers for stuff. There's just plenty of things I see come up a lot and this is fun for me. All right. I have the, uh, the Joyo Zombie 2. It's pretty neat to play around with, but I haven't spent a great deal of time with it. Awesome. Is the Zombie 2 the... Is that the amp? Because they had a great little, um, like one of those uh, Class D valve combo heads, which were awesome. I, I really like that. I didn't know they made new ones of those, so well done. Uh, is it Quixo? He says, I'm a lifelong drummer. Recently started playing guitar. I was already quite interested in guitar, so I know quite a bit about them. But, have you, but do you have any recommendations for the best amp 500? Is that euros? No, it's pounds, right? So 1500 bucks. If you're going to be playing with a drummer and you know how loud drummers can be, get a Hot Rod Deluxe. That would be my starting point for around that price. I'm pretty sure that falls within that budget. You get a 12-inch speaker. You get good. Uh, you get a great clean channel. You get a really good drive channel. If you ever use pedals, it's the amp to use for pedals. And it's way loud enough. Um, it might be too loud if you're just jamming at home. You can probably get something smaller. But I would start by having a look at that because that's a really solid amp. You could also get, if you want to get something smaller, get something, well, it depends on what you're playing musically as well because there's no one right answer for everything. But I love my Marshall DSL 40 and it gives me the great cleans, awesome crunch. Like you're buying it for its classic rock crunch channel. And then it also has this high gain ultra gain channel which kills i've actually got a, a new video coming up about that <laughs> i was supposed to film it this week but i had a few other projects i needed to finish including guitar search saturday but it is coming back up so um or it is coming up soon but yeah try those to start with there's, there's also smaller versions of similar amps as well so you can get a dsl 20 which is a really solid amp if you're in the uk check out artist guitars and have a look at their artist tweet tone 20 it's awesome. I did a review of that on YouTube. I still have it to this day, and it's an, an amazing amp for 20 watts. It has all the good stuff of the Fender amps, all the good stuff of the Marshall amp when it comes to the drive channel. It's smaller and lighter, and it sounds amazing. <laughs> all right. I just saw the second part of your question. Uh, all those amps will be a, an upgrade over the one that you've got, so uh, give it a look. Or they'll be different anyway. All right. Hey, Shane, I know you reviewed the Slash guitar a few months back. In your opinion, are the pickups a match? Oh, sorry. Uh, I've got to make this bigger, man. When it moves, it's brutal. Sorry, mate. One sec. Hey, Shane, I just reviewed... Uh, I know you reviewed the Slash guitar a few months back. In your opinion, are the pickups much different to regular PAFs that you've played? They're burst buckets, and they're unreal. <laughs> that guitar has some of the best tone of any Les Paul, so you'll have no problems getting a great sound. Burst buckets aren't high output pickups, but they got all. The, I've said this before. They got all the clarity in the world. They're very balanced throughout all of the the notes. So there's, they're not like too over the top heavy on like the bass frequencies or anything. I love burst buckets. I think they're the best. And in that slash guitar, they sound killer. I almost bought one. I was like, oh, I've got a flying V with burst buckets, so I didn't need it. But just a really great guitar. So they they've got gold tops. They got the November burst. They've got another one. So yeah, check it out. I, I have no problems recommending those at whatsoever. Do you ever use pedal switches like uh, Gig Rig or the Boss stuff? Never. My foot is the pedal switcher. <laughs> I don't really have like complica complicated 
signal chains. I reckon that's the worst thing to do for the kind of music that I play, which is either originals, blues, or occasionally like a classic rock cover. All I really need is either one side of an overdrive pedal or the other and both and stack them. Bit of delay. I'm all, I, I never need to just hit one thing to turn lots of things on or off. So for me, I, I don't need it. Um, if you've got a really complex pedal board and you need to hit one button and it turns on a chorus, a delay, some sort of other modulation pedal, whatever, then that's a good move. But I, I sort of don't really think it's worth it for, for what I do. So I, I just don't waste my time with it. Hey, we've got Hogan here. Welcome, mate. All right, let's just go down here. Uh, Gary says, I have two strats, three Telecasters, not a fan of Les Paul. Any suggestion for something a little bit different? One more guitar and I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, famous last words. You know, have a look at the Paul Reed Smith, the PRS SE Custom 24. That's a really good place to start. That's different to a Les Paul or whatever. I love my Flying V as well. That's quite a lot different to a, a Les Paul. It's lighter. You know, it, 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 it's weird in terms of its shape, but it's something different as well. So there's a couple to have a think about. Um, if you are looking for something a little bit more high-end, have a look through my feed and any of the thumbnails I did at Jerry's Lefty Guitars where there's like a wall of guitars in the background. Have a look at that playlist. There's heaps of cool guitars in there. Even Eastman, you know, if you're looking for something like a 335 style guitar or you can get a 335 from Epiphone or, or Gibson, whatever. Ah, okay, so the Spain Howler says, the Joy pedal that simulates the Vox and British pedal that are basically a Marshall in a box. Yeah, you don't really need to do anything. You can just plug that straight into uh, what I used to do with it and this is how we recorded with them for an album. You've got your overdrive pedals if you want to use them. You go into that pedal, whatever the amp sim is, it doesn't really matter. Going out of that into a reverb and from that into your sound card and it sounds amazing. So that's how you can get really great tones. You don't need to go buying anything else. That I mean, you can. You can buy like an IR loader for that and it will improve the sound, but it already has some sort of like speaker emulation built into it. A little, or at least that's how I heard it anyway. It didn't sound sterile. So uh, yeah, you can just record out of that directly into a sound card with all of your pedals going into it. But I always found it sounded better with some sort of reverb pedal after it before you go into your sound card. All right, we've got uh, Guitar Man 45. Welcome, mate. One of the members to the channel, so thank you for the support, mate. I know I'm a little bit behind the, the comments here. I'm just uh, scrolling back up. If I missed your question, just at in the blues me, because I noticed when I watched back the video to put the timestamps in, there were a lot of questions that I didn't even see come up in the feed. I think it sort of sometimes filters things, not like you're getting like not seen, but it filters what I see. So everything's in there, but it, I think it uncomplicates it a little bit. So just add in the blues me. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll says, Shane, do you play any bass at all? Just got my first bass after years of guitar, Squire, PV bass. They're great. Classic vibe ones are nice. Surprised how much different it is trying to adjust to it. Much harder than I thought it would be. Yeah, a lot of guitar play. I play a lot of bass. So all the bass on my intro tracks are my playing. <laughs> and I've played live bass gigs, jams, everything. So I don't play like uh, as much, obviously, on as I would guitar. But for blues and all that kind of stuff. If you see the Keys to the Guitar Shop series, I'm on bass for some of that as well. So yeah, it, I love playing bass. And what it does, what I was gonna say before, it exposes your timing problems because you're playing a very different instrument. It's a rhythm guitar. It's, you know, it's a real, or I should say it's a rhythm instrument more than it is anything else. A lot of guitars can be the icing on the cake, but if the foundation's not there, it sounds crap. So yeah, playing on time is, is a really, Bass playing on time, I should say, really improves your overall perspective when it comes to playing rhythm guitar as well. It's a great instrument. It's a lot of fun. And that big full sound is wild. So congrats. I used to actually have a Squire, uh, what was it called? A, a PJ bass. Now I've got an Ibanez sound gear. Uh, I had a Harley Benton one as well. It was just a little bit too heavy for me, that one, but it sounded unreal. But the Ibanez sound gear, I picked that up years ago, used, and it... Uh, I love it. It's light. It's got active pickups, which you'll either like or you won't. 
but for recording at home, having that active option is is pretty wild. So yeah, it's uh, bass is fun. What's the fix for the PV Delta Blues reverb feedback that you showed me? I I have one and it does the feedback all by itself. I sold it. That's how I fixed it. You know, I got to give PV credit at the time. And this had nothing to do with my YouTube. This was like before the channel probably even had about eight, 10,000 subscribers. I'm not really too sure. So that I had the amp serviced. They did nothing to it. I got it back. I complained to PV. <laughs> I said that no one's fixed anything. Nothing's changed. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the amp. So after a whole lot of emails, the guy who was their rep or whatever for their service team actually showed up at my house. And I showed him, I'm like, have a listen to this. He goes, all right, all right, well, uh, I'll, I'll take it and I'll get it fixed. Got it back. They did nothing to it. And this cycle went on and on, right? <laughs> so third time lucky, he's like, all right, uh, just we'll get you another one. I got another one. I did exactly the same thing. So I tried everything with this. I tried changing the reverb tank. I put a, a different one in. I tried, and it just didn't do this. It didn't sound good. Like there were all these other uh, factors that just didn't work out well. So in the end, I just got rid of it because it was... It was just, yeah, it did my head in. I like reverb and I play loud. So uh, for me, it was just, um, it just wasn't, it wasn't going to work. Hey, Lawrence, thank you, man. Welcome to the general support. He's a, just joined the channel membership. Thank you, mate. I appreciate it. I post some behind the scenes photos, a few little bits and pieces as well, but all the public videos are to everybody because it's, you know, you guys all support the channel. So thank you. I appreciate that, mate. And uh, anytime I post on the feed or whatever, or if you comment on the videos, I'll see it as a priority comment too. It's pretty cool how it works. So thank you, mate. All right. Hey, we've got John here. Welcome, man. Ed Dana's here. He says, have you ever tried the Joyo Hot Plexi? One got sent to me and I love it. Um, you know, my memory must be getting funny with these pedals. I, a lot of the Joyo stuff I reviewed so long ago. I have tried this one. I think this is probably back in like 2011 <laughs> or sometime around there. Um, from memory, it's good, but I, I I only remember it visually. I, I just can't recall like all the videos I've and pedals that I've filmed because some of them I only had on loan and I gave them back and some of them I got to keep, but also I didn't keep long because it was always just stuff coming in and out. And I was buying and selling a lot of stuff. So... Um, you know what? I'll, I'll revisit that, Ed, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know because I'm not exactly sure <laughs> anymore when it comes to videos you know, ten that are 10 years old at least. All right, let's go back up here. Michael says, are you more of a Strat guy or Tally guy? I mean, long term, I've been playing Telecasters for years. You know, I've got two Butterscotch Tallies. One I've had for since 2008. So it's, it's still going strong. I bought that in San Francisco. And that's been that one you see all of the time with the Danny Gatton pickups. Um, I, I love that guitar. I've enjoyed a lot playing a Strat I love as opposed to playing a Strat that I'm not completely sold on. I went through a period where I was playing Strats a lot, but I wasn't loving it. It's like my tally's better. But now I've got a Strat that's a good point of difference and I love playing it and it makes the world of difference. Um, I think as a lefty, when I was really trying to love strats, the options just weren't around. They, they just weren't. So um, yeah, I would say long-term, I'm more of a Telecaster guy without question, but lately I've been playing my strat and I like the challenge of it. It feels different to play for whatever reason. So yeah. Uh, let me scroll down. <laughs> John says, I hate it when the streams are on during work. It totally interrupts me <laughs> watching and chatting. Yeah, sorry about that, mate. You know, I, I used to do these, as you know, late at night. I was just, it ends up just, bit, I end up like yawning and I'm wrecked and I'd rather do it right after the gym. I've still got some caffeine in the system here and I'm good to go. So we're going to do some daytime ones and I'll do some sort of like late evening ones, but I'm not going to do the the midnight shift anymore to one o'clock. It's just, it's just not good, <laughs> especially for the next day as well. Um, have you given the JHS Bonsai a go? You know, I have, I've tried that, but I haven't reviewed it. 
it's a great little pedal. It really is. Um, that's basically like a Tube Screamer style pedal with lots of different clipping modes. So you can get pretty much all the classic circuits in, in one. I think I tried that at a guitar center, possibly. This was a long time ago as well. Well, not that long ago, maybe like four years ago. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually reviewed one of those. I can, I'm pretty sure Sky Music has a lot of that stuff. I'll, I'll see what I can grab. There's a whole lot of like classic pedals and really interesting ones that I've tested, not reviewed, that I actually want to put on the channel coming up. So yeah. Uh, you can always get work if you play bass. Absolutely. If you know, if you've ever been in a band, the bass player is in six bands. <laughs> Bass playing is so good. Like, if you think you're getting, like, good on guitar, go play bass. And then you, you're kind of, like, thrown into... I tell you what, this is this is the thing that it did for me. It improved my timing like you wouldn't believe. My execution and trying to be well aware of the note on bass, where it sits, listening for the kick drum, listening to the snare. You say, oh, yeah, I can listen to the, the kick and snare as a guitar player. You don't, you don't, you hear it and you listen to it, but you don't really take as much notice of it as you do as a bass player. It completely changes your appreciation for not only bass players, but music in general. So get a bass if you can and enjoy it. I'm trying something very new coming up, which will be another sort of like thing that I want to showcase at some point because I want to try producing a new style of music I've never made before. You might be able to guess what it is. We'll talk about the 80s before, but I'm going to dive in in the deep end and I bet what this does for my musicality will be good <laughs> just because it's completely different and I can also contribute to it with bass and guitar if I need to as well but anyway we'll, we'll save that one up hey we've got another member here we've got uh, Don thank you man appreciate that thanks for the support if you guys have any questions just add in the blues me thank you so much awesome stuff um, what's a good starter guitar for multi effects which don't suck? <laughs> what's a good starter guitar multi effects that don't suck? Um, so do you mean like what's good in terms of what's inexpensive or do you want to get something good that's easy? Because they're, they're two different things. Um, I would say one of the best... Kalen make a whole lot of really great multi-effects pedals. They're all in ones. A lot of it is analog, which makes the whole process a lot easier. It's just one big board. You can, if you type in Kalen multi-effects, you'll see it come up on my, in the blues, or on, on the search, right? Just always add in the blues if you're looking for my videos. You can just type in Telecaster in the blues, bang, it'll, it'll pop up, for example. But they make really good ones. Um, you can also get the... Uh, New X Cerberus, I think it's called. I always think it's Cerebus, but it's Cerberus. That thing is awesome. I got two friends of mine who use those live. And they're a good mix of digital and analog circuitry. And you can also run them into like a PA system or a straight into your amp, or you can run them into a sound card, whatever the case may be. Both of those are, are really solid options. I would almost say go that way. If you're just playing at home and you want something you can record with, Man, the Moore stuff or more, however you say it, that's really good. It's a bigger learning curve, but it will probably give you better results for just recording at home because they, you can get, excuse me, you can get those impulse responses downloaded, which are like speaker and amplifier and microphone uh, cabinet reference tones that you can put into this thing and then record and it'll give you a really accurate sound. So start with that um, and you can find all of that on my channel. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, far out, Tony G. Thank you, man. Thanks, guys. Don, as well, for the uh, memberships. And Lawrence, this is, this is crazy. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, like I said, if you join the membership thing, I'll see your comments on my videos, and I always make an effort to reply. I'm doing that way more now than I, I was over the last sort of six, eight, 12 months or so. I wasn't really replying as much, but I'm keeping an eye out on comments on all the videos more, but the membership ones do come up kind of in, in their own section for me. I found where that is, so thanks, guys. Um, hey, we've got Lost Reb. Welcome back. He says, I uh, can't believe I made it two weeks in a row. Me either. <laughs> no, 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 I'm only, I'm only joking. It'd been so long since I did live streams on this channel. I really missed doing it. I was just trying to get all the stuff done for 
all the guitar search Saturday videos, man, they take so long. Like the whole pro, I'm not complaining. I love doing it, but it's like, I might put 12 hours of editing time into those or more. And the one I got this weekend, I think you'll get a kick in out of it, especially if you like kind of like less expensive stuff and just really cool stores. So um, Saturday. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining in again, Lost. I appreciate it. Hey, Landon's here. Welcome, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we've got Jamal. Jamal's in the house. She says, I just got home from work. Long day. And did not enough guitar playing. You know, me, me either, mate. After this, I'm going to practice. I need to get my chops up so I don't get burned this weekend. I got Brian and uh, Rick coming over and Richo as well, the drummer. And they're going to, they're going to, <laughs> they're going to leave me for dead if I don't play a little more before that. So uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to record some of that. And if any, anything good shows up, we'll, uh, we'll post some on the channel as well. I got this great little area in the house here where we can set up and add a few lights and it looks super cool. So yeah, I really need to be playing more this week. I've spent a lot of time with the mouse clicking and editing in Final Cut and not enough not enough actual playing. So that's, that's the plan. <clears throat> you should try solo... Solo King guitars. Sorry, I misread that. That's from Alexander. He says, uh, seems to be awesome guitars. I, I've never heard of them before, mate. Very cool. All right, let me scroll down here. Thanks again, Don and Tony G. All right. What gauge strings are you using and why are eights the best? <laughs> yeah, eights for me, uh, unplayable. Nines. I use nines only when I borrow guitars from the shop and I take them back the next day. That's the only time I play nines. Tens to 46 are the best for me. And one of the big reasons why I went down to 10 to 46, one of my friends said, if you play in a Telecaster, which I was playing for a long time and still do, he said, you're better with tens to 46 than 11s to 48s or whatever I was playing. I'm, okay, so I started doing that. And then I had a really bad tennis elbow thing and I went, all right, I'm just going to put tens on everything. And it made remembering what guitars or which guitars had each kind of string gauge. So 10 to 46, Diodarios or whatever I can get that are sealed and affordable. That's what I end up with. And uh, eights are the best. <laughs> Look, the tone won't get affected. You know, we're talking about this on Addicted to Gears uh, live stream not long ago, but yeah, it's sort of, tone-wise, it doesn't matter. It's all about the feel and how the bend responds when you dig in. That's the biggest thing for me. Like, I want a bit of resistance, but I don't want it to be impossible. I want to know that I'm not going to just overbend by two frets or two steps or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Doug says, you just sold me on the Cerberus. Also, yes, I had the, the more Ocean Machine. And it was just too smart for me. Yeah, look, the Cerberus is a hard multi-effects pedal to beat. It really is good. It's like about that big, you know, so it's not huge. Small, it's got all the inputs and outputs. You can get really fancy with it and you can connect it to the computer and do all that or you don't need to do any of it. <laughs> you can just use it. Um, those all-in-ones that, that have an analog feel to them are, are definitely the way to go. I always kind of find like, I, I said this on a... a some video I made back in the lockdown days where I was saying if multi effects pedals ever come out with a pedal that is mostly analog in its approach, they're going to get it right because you don't want to be menu diving, especially if you, you know, you're playing live, you can't be doing that kind of stuff. You just want to be able to turn a control. And I think the Cerberus is the best mix so far of like all of that and some of the Kalen stuff as well. It's really good. And tech 21, they also make great multi effects pedals, but they're, you know, getting into the more expensive territory. But Tech 21 are like the innovators of a lot of this stuff. They'll release something, then all these other companies will release something. So yeah, props to them there. They make good stuff, good amps, good pedals. What do you think about trying to move stretch from uh, 24.75 scale to 25.5 when you have limited reach on the 24.75? Short pinky syndrome is a killer. You know, I used to overthink changing between guitars and scale lengths. Now I don't even care what the, the guitars are or the scale length. You kind of adjust. Um, if you 
struggle on 24 see this is the thing when i when i went back to playing a strat after playing all kinds of other guitars for a long time especially when i was playing my 335 they're harder to play initially some people will, will argue the opposite right but i always find if i've been playing a shorter scale guitar i get onto a strat or a telecaster i've got to try more <laughs> they're not as as instantly easy but after a little while you just adjust you, you kind of Make those minor adjustments with your fingers and you won't have to think about it. I, I always say just go easy on yourself when you switch guitars if you don't if you're not in a position like I am where I get to play a lot of stuff. You know, when when I did that Jerry's Lefty guitar session, I literally was grabbing a guitar off the wall, tuning it up, and we started. I went straight into the jam tracks. I didn't think about scale length or any of it. I was just like, alright, this looks cool, let's do this. Alright, let's grab that. You've got to kind of treat guitar a little bit like that. Um, and I don't know if I know a lot of guitar players with smaller hands than me that are great strat or tele, telecaster players. So yeah, just, just, uh, just play, give, give yourself some time. And that's where sometimes having lighter string gauges on certain guitars can be advantageous, especially while you're getting the feel of it. Hey, Tony G. Oh, did I already say Tony G? I did. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a fan of the hybrid slinkies. Yeah, they're good too. I used to love using those um, Ernie ball strings. Uh, the, only, the only problem I have with, I think the Ernie ball strings, they're not sealed, right? And sometimes mine sit around forever. They're sitting around for six months, uh, which probably isn't good either, but I like having sealed packs. But yeah, the, the hype, those slinkies are unreal. How do the LSLs compare to the Fender Custom Shop guitars? That's from Rob. They're, um, they're amazingly good. They're every bit as nice. Some would say they're a smarter guitar because one, the nuts cut correctly, which you can't say about most Fender guitars. Secondly, <laughs> the, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Riff. I appreciate that, mate. I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, secondly, they've got stainless steel frets. So you will never have to do a fret job on, on the guitar. They'll just be great long-term. They've got unique finishes. They've got like a metallic finish and that's more of an aesthetic thing. They make their own pickups, much like Fender. But I would say the biggest difference is just the ones that I've seen are really on the same level with the Fender Custom Shop, except they're made in LA instead of wherever. Where are the Fender guitars made again? Is it still Fullerton? It's probably not, right? I don't know. But um, yeah, great guitars. The biggest trade-off, again, is the resale value. I'm pretty sure you probably would struggle selling a guitar. See, this is the thing. Guitar players will know these other brands. If you've been playing a while, you'll know Collings, you'll know LSL, you'll know all these other brands. But if you're just getting into it, people want to buy a Fender or a Gibson or a Squire or an Epiphone, right? There's not a lot of these other brands that will go sort of under the radar for a lot of people. Like G&L. G&L is great guitars, but you buy one, you've blown your money if you ever try to resell it. They just don't hold their value. So... I think that's probably the only downside to an LSL, but they make guitars with like rose, rosewood necks, roasted maple necks, everything. And they, they sound really good. That LSL that I reviewed was killer. It was really good. I re kind of wish I had have done more of them, but they were all kind of the same. So I thought, oh, the ones at least at, at Jerry's in, in regards to the Telecasters. But yeah, super cool. Uh, Ed says, I never cared about scale length for 20 years. I didn't know there was a difference. Yeah, that's that's a, the best way to... You're a player though, man. You pick it up, you play. <laughs> There's a lot of obsession about specs that I don't really understand. The same in any industry, right? There's people... And I must... This isn't an attack on anyone, but don't worry about the specs as much as how does it feel to play. And if you, ch if you change guitars over to something else, it can take you some time to get used to it. But the more you go back and forth between guitars... And if, say you can pick up a Strat and a Les Paul and go in between them and not think twice about it, that means you can pretty much play anything. <laughs> so it's worth getting comfortable on a lot of guitars. Uh, hey, Riff, he says, uh, hello, Shane, almost up to 200K subs. Good work. Thank you so much for the support, mate. Appreciate that. It's, uh, it's getting there slowly. <laughs> it's funny. It took so long to get to 100,000 subscribers. It took like... I don't know how long it took, probably, what, I don't even remember what year it was, but yeah. Anyway, and now it's it grows faster after 100,000 subscribers, but it, then it it's like 
to get over a milestone once you start being more aware of it seems to take forever but it, I, it is what it is but thank you thanks for the support mate it's funny because there's like i think there's a misconception too like the subs well it does obviously help your channel but the views also help your channel more so it, it is what it is um but I, I appreciate that we, we'll get there hopefully by the end of the year hopefully sooner we'll see how we go I got a whole bunch of different stuff coming up pretty soon. I'm going to get through the backlog of all the overseas stuff, which I'm nearly done. I've got three videos to edit. Four. Four. And then I'm finished. <laughs> and one of the best guitars I've ever played that's ridiculous is coming up in a couple of weeks. The title will be very obvious. So, uh, yeah, unbelievable guitar. Just, just crazy stuff. <clears throat> What guitar pedal would you take as a desert island scenario? Oh, the VS Audio Royal Flush. If I had an amp and a guitar, that's what I would take. <laughs> Bit of overdrive is always good. Scale... Oh, sorry, the, the chat just moved here. Uh, Jason says, Any thoughts on the Boss 200 series? Let me have a look. From the top of my head, I, I'm not too sure. Oh, yeah. All right. So these things look good, but one, they're expensive. And two, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. So you've got to be right into the tinkering side of wanting to get sounds. For me, I, I wouldn't buy one of them. They just look way too complicated. Um, maybe they're not. And I could be wrong, but anytime I see like a big LCD screen and a menu on an effects pedal, it's usually sitting on the floor. It's like, where am I? You know, so yeah, if you're just recording at home or whatever, you can have it on the desk. It's easy to see and to tinker with, but those kind of things end up doing my head in, especially if I know what I'm looking for, or I won't utilize 99% of whatever's in there. You just pick one sound and you're good to go. So I need to look into that more. I haven't seen them other than visually right now. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Jolt Mark says, I don't think the front spacing is much different based on scale length. I think the radius might make a big difference and the neck shape. Yeah, totally. Neck shape can be a huge thing to get used to. Some necks are just way too thin for some people and some are way too fat. Um, and the scale, the, uh, the radius as well can change the feel of the guitar big time. I know when I reviewed that, I think it was a Charvel. It was so flat on the fretboard. I was like, whoa, this is completely different to what I'm used to playing. You do kind of accommodate for it, but yeah, very different kind of feeling guitar in the hand. Definitely not the kind of guitar I would use. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but yeah, just that kind of super flat fretboard is from memory. I think it was that one. Anyway. It might've been an Ibanez, but it was, uh, it was full on. Your other photography related channel is great too. Hey, thank you, Gary. Appreciate that, man. I'm trying to trying to grow both. <laughs> I really love shooting with tech. This is my little tech room. I got all my camera equipment and crap in here for for that. And um, we're gonna do some podcasts in here as well. This was the plan going a while back. So I've got like this uh, nice mic over here set up. This is the Rode uh, Broadcaster, which is like an absolute, I don't know why I didn't use this today. I should have used this. Um, I'm using this overhead mic, but it should still sound pretty good. The, uh, yeah, I like this room. It's just a bit easier to do a live stream in. It's kind of more comfortable. Um, hey, Drew's Drum Tracks is here. Welcome, man. About 12 years, I reckon. Uh, oh, I might have missed <laughs> I might have missed, missed the context of that, mate, but I hope you're doing well. It's been so long since uh, we jammed. I haven't been to the jam in... God, when was it? Like five weeks ago now? Maybe longer. Maybe whenever we went was the last time. I'm practicing on my Les Paul Jr. and always play my Strat Live. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Tony G says, have you ever played a Mi any Michael Kelly's? I don't think I've ever seen you review them. One, it was a hybrid guitar. So it was a mix of electric and it also had like a piezo pickup system so you could get the acoustic sound. It was a semi-hollow body PRS-ish looking guitar. Um, type in Michael Kelly hybrid and it will come up or Michael Kelly in the blues. You'll only find one video and that'll be it. 
I think I showcased them on a guitar search Saturday at the guitar show. They might have just been there as a shot. And again, that's a guitar brand I don't see very often. Hey, Nick. Welcome, man. I don't know if I said hi before. Sorry, I probably did, but welcome. <laughs> the chat keeps, like, blasting down. I go back up and I can't remember if I replied to stuff. Uh... Ah, here we go. Just for those who are having problems rem remembering like me, the Fender Factory in Mexico is in Essen... Ensenada... En Ensen... How do you say that? Ensenada. Is that how you say that? Still in the coveted church on the... Okay. Oh, it's one thing I've never really looked up. <laughs> Have I tried uh, Mogami cables? And can you really tell the difference between high-end cables at all? No. Save you money. Uh, you don't need to be spending crazy amounts on, on cables. Just make sure you don't buy junk. You want ones that have like Neutrik connectors on them. I, I said this a few times. You, the cable sound is very... The difference is so minuscule, if anything. Like if you're just listening to a cable... Say you've got a $30 cable and a $200 cable. There's going to be no difference in the audio. And sometimes... More expensive cables don't even last longer. That's sometimes the argument to buy them. I've had cables for over 12 years that I bought for $9 when I was overseas one year and they're still going strong. You see them all the time on my channel. So you don't need to be spending ridiculous amounts of money on a cable. It's an absolute waste of money. So just get anything from a brand that you have you recognize. The Adario ones are good, lifetime warranty. And from what I understand after talking to someone who worked for them, like 99% of people never claim their lifetime warranty when their cables go bad, which they can. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my suggestion. Um, look, there, there are some advantages to certain cables, especially the ones where if the end goes bad, they're designed so you can clip it and re-plug them back in and sort of screw it back up. Those are pretty cool. Uh, and there's a few brands that have those, but yeah, don't waste your money. Don't Don't spend like... $200 on cables. It's basically like buying an HDMI cable for your, for your, whatever it is you want to plug your, you know, your Xbox or something in your TV. The $10 one, if it works, is going to be as good as the $300 one that works. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Actually, the, technically that's different. One is ones and zeros and one isn't, but the point is the same. You're not going to notice a difference. Um, Here we go. Uh, I found a big difference between the high end and low end cables. So if we're talking about the one that you get in a box with a guitar that you throw out as soon as you get it, those are crap. The handling noise is also a really big problem with cheap cables. And that means like if you get it plugged in and you tap the cable on the ground, you hear it come through your sound. Though Those kind of cables are junk. Those black plastic ones with the plastic ends, they usually got one of those cable tie things around the cable, which is probably why they were invented. Th those are terrible, man. Th those are like one of the... Anytime I see one of those, I throw them out. I have no idea why even put PRS puts one of those in their SE range of guitars. Just save the earth fill, right? Like, just don't make them anymore. <laughs> Take 40 cents off the guitar. Ah, Drew's Drum Track says uh, it took 12 years to get to 100K. Yeah, well, there you go. <sighs> it's a long time. I, especially because, like, back when I first started posting videos... I don't think YouTube was like YouTube was nowhere near as enormous, right? It wasn't like a job until like 2014 for me. So yeah, I've been uh, been doing that since. It's been great. <laughs> so thank you everybody for the support. Uh, oh, anyway, I'll finish your your question there. It says, um, but not as much difference between the high end cable brands. Gotcha. Sam Ash sells Michael Kelly. Very cool. I always think of Escondido, California, when I see that name. And that's where I'll... Yeah, there's a great J.J. Kale and Clapton album, The Road to Escondido. It's awesome. Probably said that one wrong, though. <laughs> Have I tried the Vox ACS1? Uh, it's uh, AC30 with a single speaker. I have, actually. It was on the Guitar Search Saturday I did at the shop in Perth, which its name has slipped my mind. 
great sounding amp. That was the amp I always wanted back when I was lugging around an AC32 by 12. It was brutal. It sounded good and it was loud, but it was way too big and way too heavy. The, the single 12 one is the way to go. They're a bright amp, so just be cautious of that. I found I had to run, I think the treble most of the way down and the cut was most of the way up. I don't know if it was just because the amp was brand new, whatever the case may be. I've tried them at Sky Music as well, but the the one I tried at, uh, I've forgotten what it's called. But anyway, you, you, you can find it on the Guitar Search Saturdays one. It's one of the few, one of the two, or well, the most recent Perth episode. Uh, do you come from a musical family? Why did you choose to play the guitar? So my mum played guitar, actually, for, for a while, which was cool. Um, and then she gave me her little nylon string one, which I've still got. And that's like a, if I had to guess, it'd be like it's serial number, like 600 or something. It's pretty old. Um, it's probably like a late 60s, maybe early 70s one, something like that. And yeah, I remember playing it as a kid briefly in school. School made us play like recorder. So I kind of got some musicality... I guess from that, but I played at the start of high school, put it down. And then I started again at the end of high school. And then I hurt my back to the point where I couldn't walk properly. And that's when I really started getting into it because I couldn't do anything else. So, um, yeah, not a lot of people in my family. Uh, everyone likes music, but not many people play it. Uh, Michael says, hey Shane, love the guitar shop videos, especially the ones from Florida. Just watched the Randy Guitar Attic one. Great stuff from my home state. Thanks. Hey, no worries. Then we've got another one coming up this Saturday. I'm going to do a live premiere. Um, it'll be about eight hours time from now, whatever that is, wherever you are. So that's coming up this Saturday, which may be Friday for some people. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll just, that's how we roll. <laughs> Uh, Scott says more inexpensive pedals, please. All right, I'll see what I can do. I'm going to definitely... There's a list of stuff I'd like to re revisit, like with decent audio quality, like back some of the stuff that's still popular on my channel. I reviewed it at a time where like no one was miking their amps up. You couldn't really edit videos <laughs> and all that kind of stuff that, or as easily, right? Going back a long time. So I'd definitely love to revisit some and try some others as well. I might, I don't often reach out to companies. I, I kind of like doing my own thing, but I might send some emails out to some of my contacts or just grab a box full of stuff from Sky Music and return it when I'm done. Cause that to me is more fun. I get to pick and choose a little bit there, but I'll see what I can do. There's definitely a list of things that will be coming up. Um, at least it probably in about a month and a half's time. Uh, yeah. How did I learn the guitar? kind of like a mixed question because some of it I, I'm some of it self-taught when it came to learning blues a big portion of what I learned in terms of like the basics came from a DVD called Matt Smith or was a VHS tape actually Matt Smith's guide to blues guitar the beginner's guide it's a great video if you can find that anywhere give it a watch if you're just getting in, into it or if you want to learn how to play blues it's great it teaches you everything um, chord shapes when to play, when not to play, basic licks, m like middle ground, sort of medium skill set ones, and then more sort of high level stuff. Or well, not even that high level, high level for a beginner. And I've eventually just got through that and I was like, all right, what's next? So then I got onto Ronnie Earl's um, guitar guide video. And that took a long time. That took probably a year or more to get through, which back then wasn't that much, but I learned heaps out of there. A lot of the riffs I still play today were from that DVD. And then I found... After that period of time, I could hear stuff and see it and work out a lot of the simple blue stuff. I still can't work out a lot of jazz runs, and but I don't. my interest isn't with that. I can put on an Albert King or a Clapton or a Buddy Guy album, Stevie Ray, and know kind of what's going on. Like I can visualize it in my head. I might not know the exact key. Sometimes I, I, you know, I'm like, oh, is that in C? I know it's in D or whatever the case may be, but I can kind of visualize some of the the runs because the more you play and the more licks you have in your bag the easier it is to work stuff out a lot of that was just like put on a dvd or a or an album and play 
And that's what I'll be doing after this. To get my chops back, I usually pick a couple of albums that I know if I can play too well, I'm, I'm doing okay. And it's good for the dexterity. You take, take your time with some slow blues, get back into practicing with some moderate sort of shuffle stuff, and then get into the, the funky riffs. <laughs> but yeah, it's like an accumulation of like listening, asking my friends, oh, what chord is that? <laughs> you know, seeing other people use a chord that I know and, and moving it up. And you kind of remember a lot of this stuff. You go, okay. Uh, it might take me a while to get that, but that's all I'm going to work on until you can get it under your fingers. I haven't done enough of that lately. I really haven't. I've been writing riffs and stuff for videos, but I haven't really been like sitting down and like learning lots of stuff. I started doing that before I went away. And then because I didn't get a chance to play a lot while I was away, I'm sort of like having to build back up to where I was before I left, but it shouldn't take long. I reckon two or three days of practice and that, that's all it really takes. Of, of proper practice not just sitting there noodling with no music like put on a track and play best practice in the world um. ah so John says only 300 kilometers from Fender USA in Corona California to Fender Mexico in Ensenada Ensenada that's how you say it right yeah um so that's the old joke, right? What's the difference between the American Strat and the the uh, <laughs> the Mexican one? Uh, what do they say? I don't know how many miles that is. Let's say 200 miles. Uh, Lost Reb says, Sky Music does a great job for you, Shane. Oh, thanks. Well, I mean, it works out for both of us. Like I, I was talking to the guy who runs the shop again the other day because... Um, He's like, oh, I always feel like I need to do something for you. you. Do all these videos and people come in. They're like, oh, I want to buy this and that. Like, what can we do for you? I'm like, man, you're helping me too. So it works out. It works out well. You don't, don't stress. They're they're a great bunch of dudes. They really are. They're super cool and they got heaps of great stuff. Um, Styles Blues, welcome, man. Hope you're doing well. He says, uh, so cool to catch you live. Love to you, sir. Such a great channel. You're such a cool guy. I thanks you too, man. I appreciate that. Do you like the Maxon VOP9 Pro? For some reason, it's my new favorite. Uh, let's just double check this one because sometimes... Is this the one with the valve in it? Oh! That'd be great. You know, I haven't tried that exact pedal before, but I've got another Maxon that's very similar to it, and it's awesome. And I've also... I think I've still got it. It's the one with the little valve in there that has the second gain stage, but that's your classic vintage overdrive he maxon were the inventors of these things a lot of people think ibanez or the tube screamer was the original but they they rebranded maxon pedals <laughs> so uh yeah even when maxon release a different pedal with a different sort of look then ibanez also has the exact same pedal in a different case it's pretty funny not a lot of people seem to um work that out but that, that's a great pedal so congrats super cool What's my favorite aspect of playing? I would say coming up with something out of nothing. You know, it's not so much the... It's like for anyone who does anything creative, you start with nothing and you, you get to a point where you've got something to show for it. Like whether that's recording your own albums or, or demo tracks or jamming, obviously playing live is a huge part of it. I would say that's equally as important, but... Having something that you've produced out of nothing is is a good feeling. Especially when you get to a point where you're not doing it much. <laughs> you're like, well, at least I got a chance to record with some great players. And this is what I did at that time. It's like a time capsule thing. Um, so, yeah, playing live, obviously, massive part for me. More so than like playing at home or, or recording. I mean, I love doing YouTube, obviously. But that also, within itself, ticks a lot of those boxes because I'm like, recording a backing track from scratch uh, i'm doing that more now i've got more backing tracks sorted out coming up with a video it's all of those kind of like positive neuron things you know like you, you end up starting with from nothing all right this is my plan for today let's get this done and at the end you've got something to show for it i'm like okay so i, I did something this is the biggest difference between that and my old it job where i was forever fixing problems like putting band-aids over stuff rather than like fixing the actual problem. <laughs> yeah, so 
Uh, yeah, it's a, I would say it's a combination of that kind of stuff. Let's have a quick drink here. We'll go for some water this time. Straight vodka. No. <laughs> no I, haven't had a, I haven't had an alcoholic drink in so long. Um, John says, oh, sorry. I'll just scroll back up. I missed some stuff. I took the cover of Slow Hand, drew it out on a bit of wood so I can play a G chord when I was given a guitar. I, I took the ah, yeah, well, there you go. That's, that's a good idea. Sorry, I was like, how does that work? Um, how do you break in a new speaker and do you think it's needed? I just put a new Vintage 30 in my DSL 40 and it sounds great so far. A lot of modern speakers don't need a whole lot of time. I, I would say this, Jensen speakers can take some time to break in and sort of soften up a little bit, but... I don't really buy it with all speaker brands. I haven't noticed any tonal changes from day one with any of my eminent speakers. I know when I put a replacement speaker in an amp, almost instantly I know if it's going to work well long term. As soon as I get it out live, that's how it sounds. There's there's no real difference. Some people will say, oh, the glues soften up and all of this and that. It's the tone wood thing, right? Sometimes, maybe. <laughs> Most of the time it'll sound good or it won't. So... A Vintage 30 in that amp is a good choice. It rolls out the, the tops slightly, but it still gives you... It's the most recorded speaker in a Marshall, basically, so you can't go too far wrong. Um, I know that Thrash Metal Studio, who was here before, also put a Vintage 30 in the DSL 40. I said that right? Yeah, and it's great. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, John says... It's been a long time since the original Guitar Search Saturday and the cash converters. Do you still occasionally check out the cashies these days just in case? I do. Um, not as often. I'm, I don't really live near any of them anymore and the ones that were near me have closed down. Um, I'm going to be in an area where there will be one pretty soon and I, I'm, I always pop my head in if the traffic's not too bad. It's sort of... I know it sounds really weird, but if it's brutal on the roads, I generally won't make my day worse. But if I'm out in the middle of the, di of the day, I should say... <clears throat> then I'll go check them out because you just never know, right? You can always, you can just sometimes go, oh man, look at this. So um, it's been a long time since I've been, um, I, I haven't filmed in a cash converters for years, but um, yeah, they're, anytime I'm near one, I, I like to pop my head in. I actually went into a few of those kind of shops while we're in Florida too because there's plenty of like the same style of shops that just sell you know, they'll buy, swap and sell places. And they had some good music stuff in there. I, I'm always on the lookout for, you know, there might be some camera equipment, dirty, dirty cheap, you know, or, or guitar stuff, or amps. I bought so many amps from those shops over the years as well. And guitars. Uh, learning now, oh, learning how half steps and whole steps and what the notes are on the fretboard also helps a lot. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Yeah, the half step, whole step thing. One or two frets, you can look at it that way too. <laughs> but yeah, the um, yeah, it does make a difference. Uh, my wife just got a new job. I will need. I I don't need another guitar. What guitar should I buy? Hang on, my wife just got. A, I don't need another. Oh, okay. So basically saying you you don't need a new guitar, but what should you buy? Hmm. Man, try something different. You know, it's real easy to get stuck playing the same brands for so long. I I did that. I know a lot of people. It took me way too long to start appreciating other guitars. So um, if you want to check out something different, check out Vola. Keys will make good stuff. Man, there's so much good guitar equipment out there. Um, yeah, I've, I've just had a chance to try so many modern takes on traditional instruments. I almost prefer them now. <laughs> it's real weird. I mean, I'm never getting rid of my classic guitars, but there's some that just play so great, like a Tom Anderson stuff. You know, just... Yeah, have a good look around. Look for something different. Depends on your price point as well. There's, that will also determine what it is you're looking for. But I would say Vola guitars are right in the middle ground of being like some of the best quality guitars, but also different enough to be cool. And they're comfortable to play and they're light. <laughs> Jun Yang. Yeah, there's the other one I've heard before. That's hilarious. Uh, given the quality of the non-US guitars as per your Eastman video, do you think there will come a time where guitars are no longer produced in the USA? 
I don't think so. I think they'll always be made there. There's people that just want to make guitars. I don't think they'll outsource everything. Maybe some big companies will make that mistake, like Peavy, where they took everything overseas pretty much. And that just shot them in the foot. But yeah, I, I don't think all companies will do that. Eastman's are every bit as good as guitars two or three times the price. That SB59, that handmade LP style guitar, that thing's one of the best guitars I've ever played and of any brand. Um, it's handmade, it, which a lot of people associate stuff made in China with poor quality. This is a handmade guitar by someone who makes guitars. It's unreal. But it's probably more expensive than people would want to spend for you know, a guitar in that made in that part of the world, even if it is handmade. So there's this trade-off between price, value, and what can I get locally and all that kind of stuff. But no, I, I always think there'll be people in every country making guitars. There'll just be more access to stuff that's cheaper made in other parts of the world than in the US or Australia or you know the UK or whatever the case may be. Uh, but that 335, man, that played so great. It was just like, as soon as I got there, Jerry's like, you got to play these two. I'm not going to play whatever you like, but just give these two a go. <laughs> I was like, all right. And I love when I can pick a guitar up off a wall and just cut a video. And I'm like, all right, done. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good sign. Just bought a mate in Nashville, uh, 808 from Sky Music. Uh, great 00 style acoustic. Very cool. The Nashvilles are good. Um, they're like the smaller bodied ones, right? I remember showcasing that on a walkthrough video I did there. So yeah, very cool, very nice. Uh, String Grip, welcome in. He says, uh, saw Ronnie Earl at the former Continental Cafe. Yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie Earl won Blues Guitarist of the Year one year. He was, I don't know exactly who gave him the award or whatever the case may be, but I remember it's a pretty big deal. So. Yeah, I think he's I think he's got some health issues or something now. But um man, one of the tastiest guitar players like from the early 2000s. I don't know if there were many people better than Ronnie Earl in terms of like the whole phrasing and the approach and the feel. He was just so good. He was really so good. I mean, there's a lot of players now who can chop it up like nobody's business, but for that style of traditional blues playing, man, Ronnie Earl's just probably still is great but uh, yeah I, I saw some of his more recent stuff and i was like oh, hopefully he's okay um <laughs> oh man some of these comments are hilarious steve you're a funny man um hey we've got zach thong here welcome man um Oh, is it Musy Lessons says, perhaps the best guitar I ever played in my life, Tom Anderson's, are incredible. Agreed. They're so good. They are really, really good. You know, another great brand that kind of, it's expensive, but great. Sir is another one that's right up there. The Tom Anderson guitars are, again, that great mix of like the classic kind of style, but better. They're lighter and they've got better and different pickup combinations and some different switches to give you different sounds and without being complicated. And that whole modern thing, again, is, is pretty wild. You know, another great brand I played years ago was um, Nick Huber. Nick Huber guitars are off the charts good. They are so good. Um, expensive, like out of my price point, but just like unbelievably good. Yeah, Tom Anderson, I, I agree. I, I've only... I think there's only one Tom Anderson guitar on the recent session I did at Jerry. So I think that's it. But there's a few going back quite a while. A while. All right. Tony says, having bought my first guitar in the early 70s in the US, remembering the selection of my local music store was pretty thin. Now we live in the best era of guitar buying. Yeah, agreed. I would say that's true with almost everything now, right? Like... I know with camera equipment, you can't buy a bad camera. There's some that don't do certain things, but they're all pretty good. Same with guitars. Like, where can you go now and buy, other than cash converters, <laughs> where can you go and buy a piece of junk that doesn't play well? Above like 200 bucks. So $200 here will get me, or actually probably just a bit less. If I spent 250, I'd get an SX guitar. 
you can buy Harley Bentons. You can get the some of the entry level Squires for like an extra thirty bucks. All of that stuff now is so good, and how easy it is to get all this stuff is also very good. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. I think you're right. Even when I was playing, when I first started playing, I got my Squire Gold Series Strat. It was a red one. Ended up putting Texas Specials in there. That was the only one I could get. I went into a music shop. I had one choice. <laughs> it's like, hmm, I'll take it. <laughs> it's like, that was it. So now I can, I can order from a specialty lefty shop. I can go to Sky Music where they might have 30 or 40 left-handed guitars. I can go to any guitar shop in my area and they've got some which is better than it's ever been. And as a right-hander, I almost I almost feel sorry for everybody's amount of options. Like there's just too much stuff to pick from, right? Like this is, I couldn't imagine it. Like going into a, oh, I can actually, I've been to a left-handed specialty store, but with that aside, I couldn't imagine going into Sky Music having 400 guitars to choose from or five or however many they've got in there. It's like, how do you pick? Um, it says, I watched a video tonight about spiders and snakes in Australia ran into a huntsman lately. Uh, not so much lately. I had one in my um, bathroom a few months before I went away. They're, they're harmless. They're, they're creepy and they're, they're quite large, <laughs> but they won't, they won't hurt you. You just got to get them into a plastic tub and get them outside. They're fast though, man. Some of them are so fast. How do you deal with negative criticism? It's everywhere. From a music perspective or just on YouTube? I think I see it nearly every, every time I sign on, there's someone criticizing something. <laughs> but it, it is what it is. Like, I think a lot of people who are new to YouTube might not know my history with gear. I always have to remember that. If it's blatantly rude, I'll just tell them to F off and block them or whatever. Right? But if it's constructive, that's different. Like, oh man, I wish you had done this more. Okay, cool. Easy. I can work on that for the next video. But... Um, yeah, I think if you're really precious about people's negative input, YouTube's definitely not a place to do it. And I always like to, anytime I'm left a comment that I could take either way, I really like to sort of check out and see what other people or what they've done. And if they've got nothing to show for themselves, I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> There's a lot of people who also get, they think, um, this is, this might sort of like, outlook on it. I feel like a lot of people think that they should have a bigger following or they should. And so they get kind of like, if I look at channels bigger than mine, I could easily get disheartened, but I'm like, good on you. You, you build up a monster of a YouTube channel. And I think there's some negative stuff based on other people's, I don't say success. Cause my channels, I don't know if it's successful, but you know, there's all these different levels of what you put out online and there's guys that have millions of followers like Rick Beato and all that. He's also put a lot of work and time and effort and, and information, all that kind of stuff out there. So you've just got to, I'm sure he cops it way worse than I do. And I'm just a, a blues guitar player. <laughs> because this is the thing, the 1% of the problem or less grows as your channel gets bigger. So at 10,000 subs, you'll have a smaller 1% as you would at 100,000 or a million subscribers. I look at channels that I followed for years that are over 4 million in, in different areas. I look through their comment section. I'm like, okay, so there's people that just have something bad to say no matter what. And I, yeah, and if someone's not adding any, like, what's the word? Like any useful information is just always complaining. I'm like, man, just forget about it. But um. It is what it is. I think as a anyone who plays music, if you if you mean it like musically, um, you've just got to trust your instincts and play the way you want to play, and forget what everyone else is doing. Just just focus on yourself. I mean, it's good to obviously learn and pull things from other people, but I meant as a player producing videos, you just got to do your own thing because you could. I could want to sound like someone else. It's not going to work. <laughs> Uh, Tony G says the Wolf Guitars out of LA is ridiculous quality for the price. Very cool. I need to um, 
look into them too. I, I don't know anything about Wolf Guitars. There's so many of these like boutique guitar builder places around. I'll just put that into the search here. Oh, it says Wolf Guitar Australia. That can't be right. Is it? Anyway, I'll have a look a bit later. Yeah, uh, the way to deal with negative criticism is to just ignore it. Yeah, sometimes it's useful. Like I've got, I've had a lot of people say, oh man, you're, you're great at this, but you need to do this better. I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> so sometimes people are right. It depends on, it depends on the intention of it, I guess. But yeah, you just ignore it. This, this is why I don't check like thousands of comments a week. I just can't keep up with it. And a lot of stuff just gets held for review. I don't even look at that anymore. If someone swears in the comment section, even if it's not at me, it, I just don't see it. And it odds are it won't pop up on the channel because it usually isn't a good thing to read for anyone's behalf. So yeah, I kind of let it go the best that I can. And sometimes when someone says something stupid and it's ill-informed, I'll reply, but I'm like, it, it is what it is. All right. All right, how long have we been going for here? What's the, uh, where are we at? An hour and 21 minutes. All right, we might wrap this up in about 10. Or maybe a little bit after. We'll see how we go. Uh, ever find a big spider in your guitar case? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Um, up. Oh. June says, or Jun, sorry, says, oh, you're a successful influencer, byproduct of 15 years of hard work. Thanks. That's what I forgot to add before. A lot of what I was trying to say with some of these bigger channels. Um, it is hard work. A lot of people don't put in the time, the effort, the they don't make time for their audience. I see a lot of big channels, not once hard a comment, not once reply to a comment. I'm like, come on, man. You got this huge following. Give a little bit back, you know? So... Um, and it, it's all, it's just the way that it is, but yeah, I, it is, it's been a big job. I remember working full time and trying to get my YouTube going. And then I was working part time and doing contract jobs and trying to get my YouTube going. And that's how the caffeine addiction started initially. Cause I'd get up, go to work, come back 12 hours later, <laughs> film before I even got changed. Otherwise it was game over. I would edit videos and put them up. That, that was my it's what I did for a long time and it was hard work, but it was also very re rewarding, you know, like these little incremental sort of like trajectories in the right direction keep you motivated. I think the bigger it gets, the harder it is to, you're not as hungry either. So I've been in a lull on my channel for a while and it's really like, it's really motivating. It does this thing to me where I'm like, okay, now it's time to really get my act together. <laughs> and it's been in a lull because I've been away and I, I didn't have as much content going up and I tried some different things, but I'm like, all right, this is going to be good to get it back to where I'm happy with it and to where I think I'm giving everybody a great mix of stuff. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Todd, thank you, man. Far out. Far out. Jeez. Hi, Shane. Um, $50 towards the next overseas <laughs> trip, mate. I'm going to buy you a... a a Pepsi Max <laughs> or, or 10. Thank you, mate. Uh, towards the next overseas trip, Guitar Sister Saturdays are looking great with the additional camera work. Shout out to Rhiannon. Hey, thanks, mate. She'll appreciate that. I'll, um, I'll buy her a coffee. I'll see you tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it, it has made the world of difference and it got me out of my comfort zone big time. You know, talking to a camera like this is easy. Well, it is now after years of doing it. Talking to a camera when there's anyone else next to you is a slightly more difficult because you're aware that someone else is with you and you don't want to stuff up and all of a sudden you're playing mind games and you can screw it up. Talking in front of a camera when you're out in public, completely different thing, but I got more and more comfortable with it. And the last, the, fina the finale of the series is is awesome. So I, I hope you like it. And this one on this weekend coming up is, is fun. And I... I felt way more at home talking and, you know, people walking by. I was just like, you got to sort of just try and do your thing. And, and having Rhiannon help with the camera work completely changed the whole dynamic of the show. So thank you. Yeah, she, there's no way I was going to do that on my own. I was like, 
I want this to be great. <laughs> and that's now that I've done that, it's going to be really hard to go back to the old format. I just, I don't know if I'll ever shoot a behind the camera on my own ever again. So, um, hey, thank you, Todd. I appreciate it, mate. You've been a supporter for so long. That's, that's insane. Thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Insane and awesome. So <laughs> not in a bad way, but thank you. Um, yeah, John just says, Todd, where you've been hiding? Long time no see. You know what? Where's, um, there we go. Todd's been around forever. Let's mod him up. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you again, mate. Thanks. And to all the channel members too, and everyone else, uh, supporting the show here. Appreciate it. Well, if you, uh, if there's anything I can answer question wise for you, Todd, just let us know, mate. Uh, Todd says, Hey John, I never get the notifications, but I caught this one. It's probably a good time to mention this. So if you've got notifications on, unclick it, click it again and click all notifications if you want to get notified. I think some phones don't push notifications very well either. So you might already have it set up right. But if you like what I do and you want to be notified, even if you don't watch the video, at least it'll pop up and you can check out what's going on because stuff will get lost in the feed. A lot of my videos, because I don't clickbait the titles like, oh no, what have I done? You know, there's not a lot of that kind of stuff. They might not get pushed as much. So you might not see it on your feed, but it is what it is. Uh, Paul Chapman says, sorry, it just moved. Have you ever looked at guitar companies that have folded? I'm thinking of buying uh, an indie guitar as an example. They're great. I have, I've reviewed one of those. They're a great guitar. It's funny you said that they're folded because I got to play one of those a while back. It was a Telecaster, gold hardware, inexpensive, and it was unreal. It was so good. I think it had a humbucker in the bridge and a Telecaster neck pickup or maybe the opposite. It was great. It was really good. Um, yeah, if, if the one you're looking at, I can't remember the model number, but just type in indie and then also um, in the blues, it'll come up. I've, there's only one video on it and the thing was awesome. No one watched that video. It's one of those brands that, you know, when somebody doesn't know the brand, it's like, oh, I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> but indie guitars, you find one of those on the used market or if it's somehow in a shop right before they're never seen again, check them out. They're really, really nice. Um, question, will you do a pickup versus pickup like a Tone Rider versus Lola, expensive versus affordable? Uh, you know, Christopher, I'd love to do that, but you know, in strats and LPs and all that kind of stuff, changing pickups is a huge pain. It takes, like to just do a video like that would take way too much time. And I don't like butchering guitars for the sake of it, just for a video, I'm not gonna do that. Um, if it, I have a chance where I get a guitar just for doing pickup reviews, I'll do it. I get pickup review offers all the time. And I say no, because I'm really happy with all of my guitars. Why would I want to pull any of them apart? Which means I probably should at some point get some sort of guitar, maybe with a humbucker bridge pickup and a Strat system uh, in the middle and neck or something like that, just to do more pickup reviews. So right now, probably not. <laughs> uh, coming up, probably. So yeah. Uh, uh, music. Hey, thank you, Tony G. Far out, man. 20 bucks. Far out. Thank you. I appreciate the support. If you wanted to type in a question there, mate, just at in the blues me and I'll keep a, yeah, if you use the at sign, type in a name, it'll come up with a list and you can just select in the blues. I don't know if it works on phones though, but on desktops it does. Hey, thank, thank you, Tony. And again, thank you to Todd. Far out. Uh, he says, my pleasure, mate. Keep doing what you're doing. A mod, how do I do this? Oh, that's all right. You've just got the wrench. If there's any spam bots, you can kick them out now. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, Ed says, I remember when you had less than 10,000 subs, been here a while. Hey, oh, thanks, man. Far out. Yeah, anything I try and do, I want it to evolve. I know not everybody likes seeing changes in things, but I want better lighting. I want nicer cameras three years from now or three years from the prior three years, whatever the case may be, I want to try and keep it growing and just make it better. Whether that's like editing techniques or talking to the camera or just anything, bringing in something different, like going to Florida, shooting some guitar shops, you know, because we were there. It's like, I just want to make it fun and enjoyable for me and hopefully make it interesting and fun for you. I look at a lot of channels that only do pedal demos 
And I, I just don't want to ever be doing that kind of stuff for work. I'd rather do something else. I like doing pedal reviews, but not all the time. I'd rather mix it up with other content. And my channel, while it's not necessarily themed, it's always guitar related to some extent. I know a lot of guitar players like going to shops and playing live and all that kind of thing. So I've tried to bring in a lot of different things over the years. And, you know, my channel is one of the first doing the podcast. I think there was one other channel. I think it was Wampler's channel back in the day. So we were arguably two of the first doing that. Guitar Search Saturdays, the keys to the guitar shop. Right after that, other shops started doing live jam sessions. I'm like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> At least the, the channel's doing something, right? But uh, yeah, I'm always like trying to think, oh, what can I do next? And that's, yeah. And I try some stuff, doesn't work. Try something else. Just keep doing what I do. <laughs> Thank you. I always try to make the videos, as uh, other than the live streams, obviously, as unwaffly as I can. I want whatever it is I'm showcasing to be the focus of the video. It's got nothing to do with what shoes I'm wearing or you know, talking about my day. No one wants to hear that. <laughs> Maybe you do, I don't know. It's like, here's a quick video on this and this is everything you need to know about it without any waffle. And uh, yeah, for thank you, Ed, for being around so long, mate. I appreciate all your support. Uh, I noticed the channel... Uh, sorry, John says, I noticed the channels I have notifications on give me a notification straight away. Those I have just subbed to can notify me two days later. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. So, are you saying that like a notification push should be something that pops up on a bell, right? That says, hey, this guy's uploaded a new video of this channel. Are you saying that you get that for subs subscriptions? Because I only get, I would only see that in the, f oh, I see what you mean. Maybe on your homepage, you're seeing it a bit late. That makes sense. What's your favorite guitar shops in Australia and keep smashing out the videos, love the series? Oh man, there's so many good shops. <laughs> We're pretty spoiled, at least where I live in Melbourne. There's lots of great stores. Like Sky Music, obviously, I've got that connection with them. Let me borrow stuff. The shop is huge and it's great. <laughs> and they've got lots of lefties, so I love that. I love KC Rock Shop down the road. That shop has a lot of great stuff. I bought a lot of guitars and amps from them in the past. The Katana, my Fender American original uh, uh, Telecaster. I bought the Telecaster from them, actually. Um, oh, man, we just got heaps of them. There's heaps of good ones around the city. There's a music swap shop. There's a lot of good ones. Man, I've done like 30 walkthrough videos on that Guitar Search Saturday playlist. Um, have a look. A lot of the early ones and a lot of the ones, even, even in Perth, the ones over there are really good too. Um, there's just so many great stores. It's hard to kind of... I've got a lot of favorite shops for different reasons and some of which I, I still haven't done walkthroughs on as well. Tony G says, Super Chat Shane, just to support the cause. Thanks, mate. Far out. And keep... Uh, if you ever come by the Pacific Northwest, I'll be a tour guide through Portland and Seattle. We're going squatching. <laughs> isn't that the? Uh, isn't that what they do in the Pacific Northwest? I watched this Joe Rogan show about uh, that. It was it was pretty hilarious. Man, I'd love to check out that side of the US. It'd be awesome. So thank you, mate. I appreciate it. Um, iconic guitars from Carlsbad are phenomenal as well. Not cheap though. Uh, another brand I've never heard of. There's so many, so many good ones. I've been watching for a little over two years now. Thank you, Scott. Hey, Tim. Welcome, man. I, I just saw your roasting from uh, Ben's channel. <laughs> that was hilarious. He's, I, that conversation went in some real weird um, directions. That was super cool. Hey, good to see you on here, man. Thank you. Actually, we might get... Maybe I'll get... If you're interested, Tim, maybe we'll do some videos here one time. You're a great player. Uh, <laughs> Quinton, welcome, man. Been watching for about 10 minutes. Man, your name's been popping up for years. So thank thank you also, uh, Quinton, for the support. Have I checked out the Mesa Boogie Mark 525? Let me have a look. I always forget boogies unless I see them and I'm like, yes or no. Oh, come on. This freaking keyboard thing. Come on. 
Sorry, let me have a quick look. I am not too sure. I don't really know as many boogie amps as... Uh, no. <laughs> I, it looks great, though. It looks really good. I, I haven't played that one. Um, my favorite boogie amps, the California Tweed. It's like a Fender Amp of the Gods on that clean channel with a power attenuator thing built into it. I love their Studio 22. Number two. Studio 22 is really good. No pedals required. A little bit like a like a Marshall amp. It's got an okay clean, but killer drive tones. Like the clean's good until you turn it up and then it starts to get pretty saturated. And if you love that, you'll love it. But uh, super cool. Um, yeah, but I don't really have that much experience with a lot of boogie amps. I just don't see them around much. They're a little overly complicated. There's too many controls on some of them. I, I don't like amps with like five channels and three rows of EQs. It's just like, man, do, do I really need that? Yeah, Lost Reb says, if it's not fun for you, it won't be fun for us. Exactly. And that's how I was starting to feel. I'm like, all right, this means I got to mix things up. So um, that's part of the reason why I wanted to get out and do some videos away. Because I was like, this will help me to no end and it'll be hopefully enjoyable. Get to showcase some different stuff. And um, yeah, I find like, if I'm really enjoying whatever it is I'm doing, it's way more fun visually for everybody. At least I hope so anyway, or entertaining wise. So thanks, man. Uh, Todd says, as my first order of <laughs> as my first order of business, everyone please hit the like button. Uh, it's good for the YouTube algorithm. It is. Um, it really does help. Comments help, all that kind of stuff. So um, thank you so much, mate. How many thumbs up are we up to here? What are we, how many people are watching? I can't really see. Uh, hang on, where's my stream analytics? Where is... What have we got? We've got 99 concurrent viewers and 99 likes. That sounds pretty cool. Thank you, everybody. Is that real? That's insane. Thank you very much. I have a half, half a dozen of the indies. Great bang for buck they are. I'm suggesting for you to review some of these companies. Oh, look, Paul, if I can get some of those guitars in as a lefty, I will for sure. Um, yeah, I'm always open to trying left-handed guitars. I don't, I don't really care what they are, as long as they're not too on the metal side, because I can't really showcase that kind of music very well or at all. Um, that's when I kind of like give up. But any, any other style of guitar, I'm all about it. Uh, <laughs> Tony J says Bigfoot are here and Volcanoes Nike World Headquarters just down the street from me oh very cool I think um, isn't that where Amazon's head office is as well is that the, down there Cat High Music says 10pm wireless guitar transmitter receiver silent tube amp with the Capitol X wireless headphone with no latency how great has tech become that you can do that you get a wireless transmitter and receiver pack. You're going into a silent amplifier with the Capdoor X, which replaces the speaker and the microphone. And you're listening with wireless headphones and it's all in real time. <laughs> that has gotten so great. Man. It's like back in the day, man, that would, that would have been the dream not to have cables and stuff everywhere. Wireless headphones have gotten so much better. I was always adverse to getting them because I thought there was always going to be like a compromise. And when I bought a computer once, you know, one of these laptops, it came with a set. I was like, Bluetooth headphones? I was like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> so uh, that that's great. Well done. What do I think of Synergy Amps? I thought it was a gimmick, but saw that Mike Soldano and Dave Friedman worked directly with them. Very cool concept to have real valves in swappable um, modules you know i don't, don't know enough about those music nerds so i can't really give you my opinion on them um i've heard of them haven't looked into them i don't really like research a lot of gear unless it's something i'm actively about to review or if it's something i'm actually interested in and that's something i've heard about i, I just don't know anything about unfortunately christopher says love the del love the deluxe can't help it but the prs 15 watt head is insane. It's so rich, absolute heaven. 15 watt head. Ooh, I don't know if I know that one. I'm just trying to work out whether or not I've seen that anywhere. 
Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Let us know the model number of the amp. What's your view on an Obsidian wire PCB for LPs, strats, and tellies? You know, I haven't used them, but I like the whole concept. Um, I know Landon's done some reviews on that stuff, so you can check out his channel. I think they're, they're pretty much made so you can pull out the electronics, just one piece, plug in a plug, and put the next one in. They're made in a very smart way. It saves all the soldering or soldering. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I think they're pretty good, although I haven't needed to buy one for myself. And I don't know if they do lefty wiring kits. I think it's all right-handed ones, which would work in my Les Paul style guitar. But, yeah. Daryl Lowe says, this is a great show. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. I'm doing it at a time of the day where I'm awake. <laughs> it's obviously a bit of a different vibe. And and thanks, everybody, for joining. I appreciate it. Um, let me just... How long are we going? I can never see how long these streams go for. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep going. I do I do need to get moving pretty soon, but... Um, can I build you a lefty from Haywood Guitars? Hey, man, that would be super, super cool. Um... If you want to email me, just email me at intheblues at outlook.com and I'd be more than happy to review whatever you got. So um, not a problem at all. Um, just know I'm in, I'm in Australia, so shipping might be brutal. But uh, if you don't mind sending it out, happy to do it. No fees. Not that I would charge for it if someone's giving me a guitar or whatever the case may be, right? So it's fine. Thank you. I don't know your guitars, um, but... I tell you what, I'll copy it. I'll paste this in. And we will look. Oh, you're in Australia as well. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that makes it a lot easier. Uh, yeah, very cool. Yeah, in the blues at outlook.com. What's your final thoughts on the, a 1979 five watt champ? I haven't played a 1979 five watt champ. I know a lot of people love those little guys. Um, for me, a little underpowered for just about everything. Even for home use, I would find five watts. Oh, actually, five watts is enough. But the cabs are small. Um, I don't want to dismiss them though, because people love those amps. I'm, I've just, I haven't played a 1979 one before, so I'm not too sure. A good mate of mine actually has a few of those. Uh, not that year, but he's got the, I think they're late 60s ones. They're those sort of blue panel ones that uh, came out. So yeah. Hey, Ron B. Thank you, man. Uh, wow. It says, uh, in gratitude for the Fender Mustang V2 files you made available on the web. It was some time ago, but I haven't forgotten. Thanks from... Oh, cheers from Canada. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that, mate. Yeah, they Fender pulled the pin on it. You know, I couldn't believe it. And then I I think I ran a, uh, something on my feed that said, hey, if you've got any patches from the collection, shoot me a, a link or an email. I'll collate them host them on a website and they'll, they're there. So guitarpedaldemos.com if you ever need the the um, the files for the Mustang stuff. I know that won't work on all software now because of the age of the actual um, operating systems and stuff at the time. But if you're still using like Windows 10, it should probably still work. Um, but yeah, it was like, that was that's the archive. Fender haven't complained about it. I got a contact there and they haven't said anything about it. So... I figure I'm not selling it for anything and that's that page doesn't it's not like um, linked with ads or anything so yeah they don't seem to have a problem with it but man those they got those amps right for modeling amps they're spot on and and thank you Ron I appreciate the support cheers Anthony Ward says do you still have your little crow guitar so interesting story one I don't one of them I don't have and the other one I still have <laughs> one I need to, so I was getting, I can't remember what I had done. I think I was getting like the pickup changed. I think Little Crow said, hey, ship it back. We've got these new pickups or something like that. And we'll replace them and you can see whether or not you like them more. I said, okay, cool. So boxed it up. The guy that always picks up the guitars came and picked it up and disappeared. <laughs> and that was the, thankfully, that was the Raven, which I liked far less than the Corvino SD, which is a killer guitar. Um, I don't play that a lot on my demos and there's no real reason I don't do it other than people go, why don't you play a guitar we know? And that's what it, that kind of comes down to. But I still play that guitar, just not as much on my videos. Um, if I'm showcasing something else, um, like 
different guitars or whatever the case may be. Or if I'm playing live, I'll use it, but I don't, I haven't used it enough on my videos. And there's no real good reason for it other than I should start doing that again. So thank you, Anthony. <laughs> I really need to start doing that more. That guitar is so good. It's got killer Briley pickups, neck mini humbucker, Telecaster bridge pickup. It's got the F hole along the top. It's light. It's got a great neck. Little Crow guitars, man. I, I far out. I really should be using that more. Oh, Vib... No need... Uh, sorry, Vibro Champ? Hang on. I'm getting confused. Oh, you're talking about the... Oh, I'm not too sure. Oh, the PRS MT-15 is a 15-watt Mark Tremonti signature head. Thank you, Music Nerd. Let me have a look. We've got... Ah. Yeah, I don't think I've actually played one of these before. I, I may have seen one a while back, but... Yeah, I'm not too sure. They've still got them in Australia here. They're... What are they? Oh, that's the cabinet. Okay, so they're pretty pricey, but they look good. All right. Well, hopefully um, I answered everybody's questions. If I missed anything, just let us know. You can post a comment in the actual regular comment section after the live stream. I don't intentionally miss stuff, but sometimes I, if I can't read it clearly or if I, it just goes by, um, yeah, sometimes the chat just moves and I miss stuff. Uh, but I'll get back to you as I timestamp some of this anyway. Everybody, thank you so much for all the support. Everybody who joined as a channel member, thank you so much. Uh, everyone who has been in the live stream here, thank you. And all the super chatters, everybody, thank you again for everything. Um, once we get through the next few videos from overseas, we start getting into some different stuff. And I've got some pretty cool stuff on the way. So yeah, I'm motivated. I got to get practicing before this weekend so I don't get my ass handed to me by Brian and Dr. Rick, even though that'll probably still happen. And then uh, I'll be back in good form for me anyway. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. Oh, I'll take this last question here. Um, have you ever owned the JCM 2000 TSL combo? I haven't. Um, yeah, the, I've only had the DSL 40, but yeah, Marshall have so many different combos for different styles of players. Uh, John says, I'm still sad about the Raven. I had a quick go on that guitar and it seemed great. It's a great, it was a great guitar. It just wasn't the one that like, if I had to pick one, I would have picked the Corvino. No questions about it. And I kind of helped conceive some ideas with that. I mean, I didn't help with any of the building or the process of it, but just the concept of it. And I much prefer, much preferred playing it. Just overall, it was a nicer guitar in the hand or it still is. But yeah, it sucks when the couriers lose your stuff and they don't get it back and then it goes into limbo and no one's accountable for it. It sort of sucks, but... All right, guys. I'm going to get some a very late lunch. Thank you, everybody, for the support. Stay tuned. There's more stuff coming up. This weekend, like I mentioned at the start of the stream, Saturday, my time, which might be early Saturday morning for some people, Saturday night, my time. New Guitar Search live premiere. I hope you like it. There's some good stuff I get to play test. It's just a good story. So uh, yeah, come along for the for the ride. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna see how I stop this stream with this weird device I've used for it. it looks like it's worked okay. So um, we might be in business moving forward. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it, and I'll catch you.